How much more I spend on my phone than what I used to is ridiculous. I look at my like little brothers and stuff. There are definitely weekends where me and him will sit inside and play on our computers. All they do is sit on like video games on the computer. I technically do two for a living. Technology isn't the enemy. I think it can help bring people into parks too if you let them know. My generation is a reconnaissance to the wilderness and I think that is spurred by social media. It's the point for me to share this with people on the internet of what look what I did and isn't this great. For people in my generation who come through, kind of have a checklist is what I've noticed. Oh, this spot, this spot, this spot, I'm gonna go there. Or is it to inspire other people to get out? The different way that we're experiencing parks is that we're doing it in a more interactive way, so we'll, we'll tweet it, we'll Instagram it. We use Google Maps to find all sorts of parks to go camping in. Airbnb, you can go look at trails and topo maps. You know, I use uh, birding apps to, to identify birds. It's easier than ever. The question is, where's the line? There's always this debate of people are like, how much are you actually looking at what you're seeing? Even though they're in nature, they're seeing it still through a screen. I and mean, I've tried that before. I've, I've not taken my camera out and I'll see a beautiful sunset or something and I'm, I just regret it. For me personally, it's a motivator. There is a big drive to have that perfect picture. I can really appreciate what I'm seeing while capturing it and I like to have those memories and I love that social media can have can capture those moments. Not that that's the driving force for our generation to come out to national parks, but I think that plays a big part in it. I see something cool and I want to take a picture of it or I want to film it or something like that, then I'm going to go out further. Meanwhile, people are crashing drones into uh, thermal features in Yellowstone. So, uh, yeah. If you have Wi-Fi in a park, sometimes you'll see the kids sitting around the visitor center. There's a lot of visitors that come here that are so wrapped up into technology. Tweeting about it and they don't really want to walk anywhere, maybe. They don't realize when they come to Yosemite National Park that it's basically a black hole for all cell phone service. I would be so <laughs> sad if the whole park had Wi-Fi. Subtleties, like natural places, become um, a lot more difficult. People afraid to be alone in nature without anything to occupy their time. And then that's when they start to realize, wow, there's like more to life than technology. I don't know where my phone is. <laughs> I don't know where my phone is either. It's really nice oh. to get a chance to just like... <laughs> oh. At the same time, Someone's gonna see their tweet who's never been to a park. One person goes and visits it and then they get to see pictures and they get to see how much you enjoyed it. People are constantly kind of bombarded with images of these places and it makes them want to go. The more you see it, the more accessible it feels. Or on Instagram, like, yeah, Ooh, let's go let's here, go let's here. go here. I can't even tell you since I've lived here how many people have reached out to me. On like social media that don't know me at all, like, wow, like you live such an amazing life. Hey, I've never been to Yosemite before, but I really want to go. In the future, maybe some of the vis visitation in national parks will be virtually. It's one thing to have it with technology. And that's probably fine. It's another thing to live it and they say authentically experience. The ecosystems don't care. They'll still be here. <laughs> we took Dagobah from Star Wars. Terrain is to simply make it. Except it's gonna be a little bit cleaner. It's like a Midwestern desert. Pretty much the quietest place you could ever come. Places that feel like rainforests and everything is covered in moss. 4,000 foot walls on either side of us. But then you get up higher and there's these jagged peaks. And the steepness. We're all dwarfed in these mountains. <laughs> it is so romantic.